Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another video. And today I'm going to be telling you about my ultimate Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction long list. So I have very much stolen this video from two other booktubers, um, but Jennifer Loves Books and Alice and the Giant Bookshelf um, did this for the Women's Prize a few weeks ago, where they went through all of the previous shortlists and long lists in the past of the Women's Prize for Fiction um, and picked out their favourite books from those long lists um, to create an ultimate long list. And I thought this was a really fun idea, so I thought I would do this with my favourite prize, which is the Walter Scott Prize, which I've been reading along with for several years um, and which I really, really enjoy. The Walter Scott Prize is a prize for historical fiction and the definition of historical fiction that the Walter Scott Prize gives is um, a book that is set at least 60 years before it is published. So the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction hasn't been running as long as the Women's Prize but it has been running since 2010 so there were quite a lot of long lists and short lists for me to go back and look through. I didn't manage to find any of the long lists before 2015, I could only find the short lists so I don't know if they only used to have a short list for the first few years or if the long lists are just um, impossible to find. But regardless, I found um, all the short lists from before 2015 and all the long lists since. And I went through these long lists, looking at the books that I had read and picking out my favourites. Obviously, I have been reading along with the prize um, on and off since 2019. Um, so I have read a lot of the books that were long listed in recent years. Um, but I had also read and loved a lot of books that were long listed longer ago as well. And it was really nice to go through the Walter Scott Prize for Historical Fiction's history and look at some of the amazing books that have been long listed. So in trying to create my dream Walter Scott Prize long list out of all of the previous Walter Scott Prize long lists, I tried really hard to get it down to like 12 or 13 books because that is how long the Walter Scott Prize long list usually is. But I couldn't do it and there are 14 books. But when I tell you that I started off with 31, I feel like I've done pretty well in terms of getting this list down. It does make me really pleased that there were 31 books from the Walter Scott Prize's history that I was like, yeah, that was a fantastic, fantastic, five star, brilliant favourite book. But I did manage to narrow it down to 14 books that have been longlisted or shortlisted for the Walter Scott Prize throughout its history and I'm gonna go through them today. I'm not gonna rank these books because I think that would be too hard but instead I'm gonna go through them in chronological order uh, by the year that they were longlisted or shortlisted in. So we'll start off in 2011 with the book that actually won the Walter Scott Prize in 2011 and that is The Long Song by Andrea Levy. This is a wonderful fantastic work of historical fiction set in 19th century Jamaica. It spans several decades and it follows the life of July who was born into slavery and the book I would say is kind of about her efforts to live and to get something out of her life um, in the very difficult circumstances that she has been born in and amidst a time of great change and upheaval in Jamaica and we kind of have this frame narrative where it's mostly in third person but we know that July is writing this story about her life um, from her later years and her son is kind of transcribing it for her. I really love this novel, it's a powerful exceptionally well written book and I love the structure of it and how that kind of looks at um, storytelling and history and I also really like the way that July's life kind of interacts with big events but often she's like kind of on the edge of these events that are changing everyone's lives um, and they do affect her life but often she is kind of just trying to live and have human interactions and human relationships. You know the way kind of individuals interact with history I suppose is the thing I love most about historical fiction um, and that the Walter Scott Prize are often very good at rewarding so I love this book a lot and yes very glad that this won the Walter Scott Prize in 2011. The next book I want to mention is a book from the 2012 shortlist and that is Half Blood Blues by Essie Adusian. On my original longer list of 31 um, I did actually have another book by Essie Adusian, Washington Black which was long listed in 2019 which I did love but I think I love Half Blood Blues more. This is a wonderful novel that is partly set in the the Second World War and partly set in the 90s. In the 1990s we're following two aging black jazz musicians Chip and Sid who are going back to Berlin for the first time in decades for a concert and in the 1930s and 1940s we're following Chip and Sid again and also a young musician called Hero and the experiences of these men during the Second World War and we know from the beginning that Hero disappeared in 1940 as a young man um, and we know that he was a German citizen and a black man meaning that he was exceptionally at risk under Nazi rule. This is a truly fantastic novel um, looking at the Second World War in a way that I don't see it looked at very often um, with 
amazing characters and this theme of music running through it that I absolutely love. Music in novels is one of my like favorite themes, um, which is one of the reasons why I think I particularly love this. But I also think it's a great book looking at history and looking at black history during the Second World War. So yeah, definitely another favorite of mine that has been on the Walter Scott Prize's long list before. Next, I want to mention a book that made the 2014 Walter Scott Prize shortlist, and that is The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. This is a strange, wonderful, massive work of his historical fiction that I absolutely love. It is set in 19th century New Zealand and it follows a lot of different characters, as you might imagine from the size of the book, who are all kind of brought together to try and unpick a series of unsolved crimes. It is such a rich weaving tapestry of a novel with so many different characters and so many different threads, some of which have stayed with me more than others. It has been quite a long time since I read this book, but I truly, truly loved it. It is one of those long books that deserves to be as long as it is um, and that really is such a rewarding read. I love the way that it looks at the complicated social, economic and political tensions in New Zealand at this point in history. I love how rich the characterization is and how this novel manages to do justice to so many plot threads and so many characters. And I just think this is a truly, truly fantastic novel. So I'm very glad that this was on the shortlist for the Walter Scott Prize many years ago and definitely a book I recommend. Then a wonderful novel from the 2015 long list is The Paying Guest by Sarah Waters. Sarah Waters is one of my favorite authors um, and The Paying Guest is a really fantastic novel. This book is set in the 1920s and looks at what happens when um, a woman called Frances and her mother are forced to take lodgers into their home because they're no longer really as financially independent as they used to be. So they take in these lodgers, these paying guests, Mr. and Mrs. Barber. Um, but the introduction of the Barbers into their life changes um, their circumstances a lot and changes things for Frances considerably as she begins to become more and more interested in Mr. and Mrs. Barber. This is such a clever, powerful novel. It looks at the 1920s so well. The sort of grim economic difficulties of the interwar period, the sort of complexities of the English class system at the time, and also the sort of complicated position of women at the time. Um, Frances says at one point in the book that she misses the war because during the First World War, there was an opportunity for women to do so much more. And she feels that, you know, there's this massive relief that the war is over, but Frances feels that she no longer has a role or a place she no longer has the kind of opportunities that she had during the war. This book has slightly unusual pacing in that it is very slow burn for like two thirds of the book and then something changes very dramatically. I think that means it's probably not for everyone but personally I really liked it um, and I thought it worked so fantastically and I just yeah I thought it was wonderful so another book I definitely recommend. Then from the 2016 long list we have Death and Mr Pickwick by Stephen Jarvis another very long book but one that is very much worth its length. I loved Death and Mr. Pickwick um, and I think it is a really interesting novel um, and a novel that I think definitely belonged on the Walter Scott Prize long list because of the way it looks at history um, and the way it kind of picks apart literary history and storytelling I guess. So Death and Mr. Pickwick is a kind of um, retelling of the creation of the Pickwick Papers by Charles Dickens. So the Pickwick Papers had a kind of interesting origin story. Um, this was Dickens's first published novel but it didn't really start out as a novel. It started off with a newspaper commissioning an illustrator and an author to work together to create certain sketches. One illustrator illustrated the Pickwick Papers for the first um, maybe two issues, I think, and then stopped and a new illustrator took over. The Pickwick Papers became exceptionally popular and it kind of started off Charles Dickens's career. And this book, Death and Mr. Pickwick, is not about Charles Dickens. It is about that first illustrator who only illustrated the first few issues of the Pickwick Papers and why why that changed. But in true Dickensian style, this book goes on so many wonderful meanders down so many threads of all of the different characters who interact with this story. And it also has this kind of frame narrative about um, people kind of uh, more in the modern day investigating the history of the Pickwick Papers um, and kind of uncovering this sort of conspiracy theory about the creation of it, I guess. And it's just such a clever book in terms of the way that it looks at storytelling and the creation of literary works, I guess. And it is such a Dickensian book in so many ways. Like, I feel like if you're someone who loves Dickens, you'll just love this so much because it's such a rich, wonderful, fun read. Um, 
and I just loved it a lot. So very, very wonderful book. And yeah, very glad that this got longlisted for the Walter Scott Prize. Next, I want to talk about a book from the 2018 longlist, and that is The Bedlam Stacks by Natasha Pulley. I love Natasha Pulley. She's probably my favourite living author, and this is the only one of her books that has ever been on the Walter Scott Prize longlist, even though I feel like all of her books have deserved to be on the Walter Scott Prize longlist. I mean, the most recent one is science fiction and definitely wouldn't qualify, but, you know... Her books are great. Anyway, The Bedlam Stacks is a wonderful novel which takes place in 19th century Britain and Peru. And we're following a man called Merrick who is dispatched on an expedition to Peru um, in order to track down a new source of quinine which is used to treat malaria. And we follow him on his journey and also his um, friendship with a man he meets along the way who becomes his guide. I really need to reread The Bedlam Stacks actually because I haven't read it for years and I really, really love it. It is a fantastic, rich, wonderful novel with amazing characterization and a really wonderful atmosphere. I just love the way Natasha Pulley writes um, and yeah I'm very glad that she has been at Longlisted at least once for the Walter Scott Prize even though I would put her on every year. I just love the way Natasha Pulley writes and I think this book is incredible. Next we have a book from the 2019 shortlist and that is Now We Shall Be Entirely Free by Andrew Miller um, and this is the first book on this list that I read specifically for the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction back in 2019 and I love this book so much. This is a wonderful novel set in the very early 19th century looking at the fallout from the Napoleonic Wars. So we're following an English military officer in the UK who is being tailed by another English officer and a Spanish officer who have some reason for tracking him down. And this book kind of consists both of this like really tense chase narrative but also this really powerful look at war and this truly incredible characterization. I just love this book so much. I thought it was so powerful. And also I think for anyone who loves Jane Austen and the Regency period like I I do. I think this book is really fantastic and looking at the really kind of darker elements of the very early 19th century um, and I just think it is incredible so I highly recommend this book and yeah I really need to read more by Andrew Miller actually anyway. Next from the 2020 long list I wanted to mention Once Upon a River by Diane Setterfield. Diane Setterfield um, is probably my other favourite living author aside from Natasha Pulley and I love her books a lot um, and this novel is truly fantastic and one of my favourite things about this novel is how it examines storytelling which I think is so perfect for the Walter Scott Prize because history is you know made up of stories. Once Upon a River is set on the River Thames um, and it looks at various characters who are impacted by the events of one night where a man and a little girl crash in through the door of the pub. Um, they have both been near to drowning, the man is injured and the little girl everyone thinks is dead except some minutes later, when she is suddenly no longer dead and is awake and alive, the man found the little girl in the river. He doesn't know who she is and no one knows who she is. And this book is about all the people who kind of come to claim her in some way. It's such a powerful, interesting book about storytelling and family and love and grief. And it is just completely magical in so many ways. This book is set in the Victorian period um, and it looks really fantastically at so many interesting elements of the Victorian period and um, the development of early photography, the position of men and women in relation to each other, the importance of the pub as like a social space in the Victorian period and it's just a truly truly incredible book that I love so much and I just heartily heartily recommend. Next I have a bunch of books that I either got out of the library or read on audiobooks so I don't have many things to hold up but I have many more exciting books to tell you about. So from the 2021 long list we have The Dictionary of Lost Words by Pip Williams which is an incredible incredible novel. The Dictionary of Lost Words it's one of those books that packs so much into it that you almost feel like it shouldn't work but it absolutely does because it's pulled off so well. So the Dictionary of Lost Words um, takes place from the kind of late Victorian period into the early 20th century and we're following the childhood and adulthood of a woman called Esme who um, grows up kind of surrounded by words because her father is working on the Oxford English Dictionary and in her childhood um, one day Esme picks up a slip of paper that has been discarded, a word that isn't going to get into the dictionary and she takes it and she starts to make her own dictionary of lost words the words that are not going into the OED either because they're too obscure or because they're sort of regional dialect words or words that are just used by women um, and that kind of thing and she ends up kind of collecting and gathering to herself all of these forgotten words so the book is partly about that and it's partly about her experiences in the suffragette movement during the first world war and so much more and I just love the dictionary of lost words 
words so much. I think it is a truly incredible book that packs so much in with such rich characterization and this wonderful coming of age story. And I just adored it so, so very much. Did I love it all the more because it was about dictionaries and I love the Oxford English Dictionary and use it a lot? Yes, but I also just think it is a truly exceptional, wonderful book. And yeah, what a great book. The next, I have two books that were on the long list in 2022. The first is Mrs. England by Stacey Halls. I really love Stacey Halls' books. Um, I think she is a wonderful, wonderful writer. I did used to work at Manila Press um, who published Stacey Halls and I have done bits and pieces of editorial work on her books in the past, um, which like does make you even more emotionally invested in an author's work. Um, but I really think that Stacey Halls is an exceptional writer and I love Mrs. England a lot. So Mrs. England is set in the Edwardian period and it follows a nurse um, who takes up a new position looking after the four children of Mr. and Mrs. England at a house in Hebden Bridge. And it soon becomes clear that something isn't quite right in this household. There is some kind of mystery or secret, or there is just something that isn't quite right about the mistress of the house. And everything kind of goes on from there. It's a really interesting book with echoes of Jane Eyre and, and such a fantastic look at the Edwardian period and the kind of like, um, fragility of the social system in the Edwardian period, I guess. I just think it's fantastic and I highly, highly recommend it. And the next book I want to mention was actually the winner of the Walter Scott Prize in 2022, and that is News of the Dead by James Robertson. I love this book so much. I thought it was so fantastic. And I loved it both for being an incredible novel, but also being an incredible book that looked at the meaning of history um, and what it means for a place especially to have a history. News of the Dead is all about this place called Glen Connock and we follow the history of Glen Connock through various different time periods, through I think the Anglo-Saxon period, it might be a little bit later than that, um, through the 19th century, through the 1940s and up to the present day with a storyline set during the kind of early lockdowns of the Covid pandemic and across many centuries this book is examining the history of Scotland, the history of Glen Connock, the way that people people use history and folklore to create a sense of belonging and a sense of place. I loved so much about News of the Dead. I thought it was a wonderful novel and each kind of storyline and thread is really powerful in its own right, but together they just have so much to say about history. And I really love the title um, and how News of the Dead is both the kind of reference to war and tragedy um, and the kind of constant uh, prevalence of death in life, but also it's a reference to history because that is what history is. It is stories and news of the dead and I just thought it was such an incredible book. Okay moving on to 2023 and I have two books to talk about both of which made the shortlist and both of which were incredible. So the first book I want to mention from the 2023 long list is Act of Oblivion by Robert Harris. This is an incredible novel set in 17th century England and America um, and it looks at the aftermath of the restoration of the monarchy in England um, and what happened to the people who had originally um, executed King Charles I and specifically we are following three characters, two people who were um, amongst the um, men who had executed Charles I and are now on the run in America and one man who is a royalist um, who is trying to track down these two men in order to execute them. So this book ends up simultaneously being this incredibly tense chase narrative but also being a book that really picks apart the complexities of 17th century history looking at politics and religion and plague and the great fire of London and the characterization is just so incredible because what Robert Harris does in this book is show you a lot of different sides of a story from the perspective of a lot of people who really believe that they're right, kind of without comment. Um, and it's just fantastic. And the ending was amazing. Um, and yeah, I really recommend Act of Oblivion. It was a truly fantastic book. And the next book I want to mention from the 2023 shortlist was The Chosen by Elizabeth Lowry. This is a truly wonderful novel set in the early 20th century, looking at the novelist Thomas Hardy um, in the weeks following his wife's death um, and kind of how he reevaluates their marriage and himself and her after her death. It is a book about grief and about writing and about an unhappy marriage with a complete lack of understanding. It is a book about 19th and 20th century history um, and the difficulties of relationships within the social context of those time. And it is also a book about how Thomas Hardy went on to write the poems of 1912 to 1913, which are probably my favourite poems of all time. Um, so that was definitely a special reason why I loved The Chosen. I just thought it was truly, truly incredible and I highly 
highly, highly recommend it. It's a wonderful novel. And if you like Thomas Hardy's novels and poetry, then you will really love The Chosen. It is such a rich, powerful book. And finally, before I wrap this video up, I have chosen one book from the 2024 long list and from the books I've read so far. And that is, of course, Cuddy by Benjamin Myers. I spoke about this at great length in a, another video recently, which I will leave linked down below, where I reviewed this along with a couple of other books from the Walter Scott Prize long list. And I just think this book is truly, truly incredible. It does a kind of similar thing to News of the Dead by James Robinson, where it looks at a place and its history through time and kind of gives you this tapestry of stories, um, which, you know, is how we create history. This book is split into parts and each part is kind of told in a slightly different form. We have poetry, we have prose, we have diaries, we have play scripts. We have a collection of sentences from primary and secondary sources um, stitched together to create a narrative. This book spans from the Anglo-Saxon period up to 2019 um, and it basically uses all of these different narratives to tell the story of the legacy of St Cuthbert um, and the building of Durham Cathedral. And I love this book so much because it is one, exceptionally powerful and every story in its own right is really fantastic and the ending was so moving, but also because it is a book about history in such a wonderful way. Um, and that for me is what I really love about the Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction, because it's not only long list books that are wonderful books that happen to be set in the past, but it's also really fantastic for picking out books which look at history and interact with history in a really wonderful way. And that's what Cuddy does. And I just love it so much. So there we have it. That is my ultimate Walter Scott Prize for historical fiction long list. Those are my favorite books that have been long listed for the Walter Scott Prize um, since it began in 2010. Um, I think all of these books are incredible works of historical fiction and I really really recommend them. Please do let me know down below in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them or if you have any other favorites from um, the history of the Walter Scott Prize. That's all I wanted to say for now. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video. Thank you.